Hi, uh, John from your Play Financial Partners, uh, looking at investment markets. As sort of expected, uh, the Federal Reserve has uh, sort of indicated that uh, rates are going to increase and that may start as early as March. Now, interestingly, now there's you know potential of a certainty coming out of the Fed. The market has now rallied around sort of three to four hundred points on the back of it. Um, you know, certainly it's been a pretty nervous start to uh, to U.S. equities uh, for 2022. That's sort of the worry and threat of higher interest rates has really been weighing on a lot of the big tech stocks. Um, you know, that's sort of been uh, uh, manifest in the uh, price action. You know, so far the Nasdaq is down just over seven percent from its highs. Uh, S and P around five percent. Well, there's also been a little bit of sort of hysterical selling out there as well. Um, you know, certainly some of the earnings are, are sort of going through have been okay-ish. Some of the guidance has been a little bit disappointing, and none more so than Netflix. Uh, they came in beat on the earnings. Uh, revenue was in line, but the guidance going forward for the next quarter was instead of adding around sort of 7 million new subscribers, they were looking for around sort of 2.5 to 3 million. Now that on the day initially saw the share price fall around 20%, and uh, Netflix is now down around 47% from its contract highs. But what doesn't seem to have been taken into consideration is that Netflix have been increasing their uh, uh, pricing structure over the last sort of year. So every uh, new subscriber now, but more importantly, the, new, the subscribers that have been there for the last sort of year or so are paying higher fees. But obviously inflation is a worry. And now you've got the Fed coming forward and saying that, you know, look, they are looking to raise rates to say it could be as early as March. It's just going to be very interesting now because potentially you're going to see a Fed that's going to be in a rate hiking uh, sort of cycle as uh, year on year inflation numbers start to fall after around sort of June, July of this year. And now the Fed has indicated they will increase rates. Uh, the sort of debate is on is how many rate rises we see this year. Um, you know, it's looking like sort of three to four. Uh, but there are sort of out streamers out there saying it could be as many as six or seven rate hikes this year. Now, if it was seven, that would be pretty much one every meeting. But what is pretty interesting is the uh, reaction of the 10 year. Um, that's currently trading around sort of 175 to 180, and it's not really seeing a big pop through that sort of 180 level. Quite interesting action on the cryptos as well. Uh, you look at Bitcoin now, that's down around sort of 40% from its highs of last November. Oil holding above 80 bucks, and that's really on the back of sort of supply issues and obviously the ongoing political tensions around the Ukraine and the sort of uh, Russian military action with uh, around 100,000 troops on their border. In the UK, Boris Johnson facing increasing pressure. Um, it looks like uh, you know the sort of res uh, results of the uh, independent inquiry into the potential lockdown breaches will soon be uh, in the public domain. And it's just gonna be very interesting to see if he manages to survive that. Because it looks like now there wasn't just one party, there were multiple incidents. So obviously politically that's uh, sort of damaging for the Conservatives and Boris Johnson. Uh, UK economy still looks in pretty reasonable shape, but again, he's still facing the issues uh, with uh, the sort of global inflation push coming through.
In Europe, interestingly, the ECB is still the only central bank out there who's still engaged in QE. And although there has been some talk about, uh, you know, potential rate increase in uh, the European uh, uh, Union, uh, that's still some way off. But again, the European economy is really playing a bit of catch up and there's sort of, sort of uh, plenty of uh, room out there for a, a reasonable sort of growth over the next sort of six to nine months at least. In Australia, quite interesting, uh, their sort of approach now to sort of COVID and Omicron, they're basically sort of relaxing uh, uh, sort of restrictions. And it's just going to be interesting to see how it sort of plays through, especially if they do get those, those international borders really up and running. Because certainly the evidence appears to be on Omicron that it, while it's being uh, much more transmissible, uh, the actual sort of caseload, uh, it sees an initial sort of spike, but then does sort of fall reasonably quickly. You know, if that is the case, then the Australian economy really does look in pretty reasonable shape to sort of push forward as it sort of plays catch up after the lockdowns from last year. But what will be interesting is just to see the inflation sort of uh, trend out there. Certainly at the moment in Australia, it's not really uh, uh, sort of picking up as it is uh, globally. And if that's the case, then potentially you don't have to increase interest rates until uh, much further down the road. Now here in New Zealand, uh, we're just sort of at the start of sort of the Omicron uh, outbreak. Um, cases so far are sort of low 50s, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how it does sort of play through. And while that uncertainty and the impact on the economy of uh, Omicron, um, that potentially puts a little bit of a spanner in the works for the Reserve Bank. We're meeting next in February. And, you know, sort of uh, uh, three to four weeks ago, it was pretty, uh, pretty much nailed in that we're going to increase interest rates again to take the OCR up to 1%. Now, potentially now that may be just postponed, although inflation is expected to print around 6% uh, year on year in the next reading. And certainly that nervousness has uh, translated into the share market. Uh, had its worst day for, uh, for quite a while, falling one, nearly 1.6%. But again, what you have seen is some sort of panic selling out there. And you know, certainly for a lot of the uh, sort of quality stocks, um, you know, if you've owned them for a while, um, there's, there's certainly no reason to, to be selling them out here. They're still getting a reasonable dividend return. But obviously the big issue is, say, is going to be interest rates and just how high that OCR goes this year. Targets look around sort of 2% for a year end. But on the positive side, you're seeing some pretty good uh, um, sort of price action on the, uh, um, in the dairy sector. Uh, the uh, sort of wholesale prices there are pretty good and potentially Frontier is looking at a near record payout, which could put around sort of $13 billion into the New Zealand economy. When you look at that, the housing sector as well, which is still pretty buoyant. Um, you know, the, the, the outlook doesn't look too bad for the next sort of six to nine months. But obviously still pretty tough out there for uh, income investors, um, you know, even with uh, potential interest rates increasing, um, the sort of uh, returns from sort of fixed interest still aren't that high when you compare them to sort of historical levels. 
And if you are looking for uh, income options, there's plenty available. Go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles. I look forward to speaking to you soon.